Um, Your Excellency, the Honorable Dr. William Samuel Ruto, CGH, President of the Republic of Kenya and Commander-in-Chief of our Defense Forces, Your Excellency, Mama Rachel Ruto, the First Lady of the Republic of Kenya, Your Excellency, the Deputy President, uh, the Honorable Kithure Kendiki, the Honorable Prime Cabinet Secretary, Musali Amudavadi, my fellow Cabinet Secretaries present, my Principal Secretary in charge of National Treasury, Chris Kipto, together with your colleague, Principal Secretary is present, Chairperson and members of the Board of Directors of the Kenya Revenue Authority, Chairpersons and Chief Executive Officers present, Commissioner General and staff of the Kenya Revenue Authority, distinguished taxpayers, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. First, allow me to begin by expressing and joining my colleagues, uh, the Chairman together with the uh, Commissioner General, in expressing our gratitude to Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya for finding time to preside over this year's Taxpayers' Day. The day provides an opportunity for us to celebrate a key national duty of tax paying. This patriotic act allows us to drive development and progress our economy. In, in line with the democratic principles, let me let us note that those we recognize today are merely a representation of the very many other taxpayers spread across all corners of this great nation. In particular, I must recognize those who comply with their tax obligations in a timely manner. Your Excellency, it is a specimen of your leadership that even in the face of real economic challenges, the Kenyan economy remains robust. My words are backed with data. In 2023, our economy grew by 5.6%, up from 4.9% the previous year, 2022. This year, Your Excellency, despite all the challenges that you have faced, the economy expanded by 5% in the first quarter of this year, and 4.6% in the second quarter, and we understand why. And the growth is expected to moderate at 5.2% in 2024 and move to 5.4% in 2025. Your Excellency, it may interest us to know and note that the global economy presently is growing at 3.2%, and sub-Saharan African economy is growing at 3.7%. So Kenyan economy is growing way above average, both the global average and the regional average. The growth has seen revenue collection triple from 974.4 billion in the financial year 2013-2014 to the present 2.7 trillion in the financial year 2023-2024. That is a total revenue. However, even with this growth, our tax gap is still estimated at around 11% of GDP in the financial year 2022-2023 against the estimated potential of not less than 22% of the GDP. This, Your Excellency, is indicative of the need to address the challenges that al allow for this tax gap. Some of these challenges include increase in tax expenditure, and when the Commissioner, General, uh, the Commissioner General spoke, he alluded to tax refunds. A lot of tax claims are also fictitious. We must admit that. And this is costing us a lot and putting a strain in our exchequer unnecessarily. The other issue is low tax compliance, as well as growth of the informal and digital sectors, which are hard to tax. This less than ideal revenue performance has direct impact, such as escalation in public debt and debt service, expenditure carryovers and accumulation of pending bills, and the result and increased requirement for funding priority interventions. Your Excellency, your loyal staff 
have suggested action to resolve this situation. It is imperative that we renew domestic resource mobilization efforts, including diversifying and broadening the tax base, strengthening revenue collection infrastructure, fight tax evasion, and improve compliance. And that is one of the reasons why, Your Excellency, for those of us who read the newspapers of today, you clearly will see proposals that have come from both the National Treasury and some have come jointly from National Treasury and the Ministry of Trade, suggesting measures that we want to take to deal with the tax administration issues and the tax administration challenges, which are resulting in some leakages in our uh, tax collection. For the first time, National Treasury has offered you explainer and also offered the people of Kenya explainer. Each suggested proposal is backed with explainer. So just read it. If there is anything you have an issue with, let us engage as a country. Your Excellency, I promised you when you appointed me that you did not appoint a con man. We will not con Kenyans. We will speak to Kenyans. Where Kenyans feel we need to change, we will change. But let us engage. Again, what I said to my team at the Treasury is I was not, when the President appointed me, he did not appoint a clerk. He appointed someone who would come up with policies. So policies must be proposed. So those who are opposing policies proposed, you are wrong. Let us engage. Let us discuss. Where you feel we need to change, we will change. We gave, we put out a notice asking you to give us proposals. We received these proposals. The end date was 4th of last month. And then we put them together, collated and synthesized, and now we have made proposals which are going to the National Assembly. Please engage with those proposals. A lot of them are not even revenue-raising measures. A lot of them are for the benefit of the people of Kenya. Why on earth would anyone oppose, for example, if we are saying that there could have been reasons why you are not able to pay your tax, and you are struggling to pay the tax, and you know how much you can pay. But because the penalties have accumulated so much, we give you an opportunity to only pay the principal, tax amnesty. Government will receive money, you will also be relieved, because now no, no one will be asking you for money. Why would anyone oppose that? Why would anyone, Your Excellency, if you allow me, give another example. Anyone op would op uh, why would anyone oppose, for example, when we propose that when senior citizens have worked for so many years and they are now going back home, they are getting their pension. That pension should not be taxed. At the moment, you have to wait to reach the age of 65 to enjoy tax-free pension. So some people retire at 60, wait for five years to go and collect their pension tax-free. Within the five years, because you don't have money, you will have died. So why do we want to push Kenyans to early grave if we can give them their pension and enjoy their life after service to this nation for so many years? So those are the kind of proposals that we have proposed, that we have made. And I have no uh, apology about it. I've put it out there with your guidance, Your Excellency. Let us engage as a country. Your Excellency, allow me to move forward. Additionally, we must harness private sector investment and enhance regional and international cooperation. Your people, the Kenyan population, must be reminded that strong domestic resource mobilization efforts is necessary to support fiscal consolidation. Sustained fiscal consolidation will in turn stabilize and bring public debt to more prudent levels over the medium term. We remain committed to optimize our debt servicing strategies while ensuring accountability and citizen engagement on matters, fiscal policy formulations, resource allocation, and expenditure, as I've just mentioned. For us to realize our economic and fiscal ambitions, Your Excellency, it is critical that we consider existing tax policies and administrative measures to ensure that they not only stimulate economic growth, but also reduce the cost of compliance for taxpayers. And I talked about that. To efficiently collect revenue and seal 
revenue leakages, there is need to revamp and upgrade the revenue collection system so as to capture all taxpayers through digitization. Leveraging on technology will revolutionize tax processes, seal revenue loopholes, and enhance efficiency of our tax system. These proposals, Your Excellency, are not meant to punish or target Kenyans. Our intention is to deploy instruments that will expand the tax base, particularly from the traditionally hard to tax in sectors while protecting existing businesses and taxpayers from overtaxation. Our tax policy, Your Excellency, you are aware that we are looking at a, in the medium term to reduce rates of tax, including corporate tax, from 30% to 25%. We are thinking of reducing VAT from 16 to 14 percent. This can only be possible if we expand the tax base and everyone who is supposed to pay tax pay their fair share of taxation. One of the principles of taxation is equity. If you are, kama unapata kidogo, lipa kidogo. Kama unapata nyingi, kama mbadi, lipa nyingi. If kama unapata zaidi, kama wengine sitaki kusema, lipa zaidi. This plan is solid and it finds root in our medium-term revenue strategy as I've stated, which has a stipulated a number of policy interventions to cushion against any preferential application and variations of various tax policies. The aim is to raise our tax revenue to GDP ratio to no less than 22% and increase the compliance rate from the current 70% to 90% and beyond in 2026, 2027. There is more positive news, however, Your Excellency. We have committed to reevaluate initiatives on tax expenditure to ensure that all incentives are targeted and beneficial to the broader economy, not unscrupulous businesses. We will continuously enhance transparency and accountability around tax incentives with a view to generate maximum value while challenging resources into critical areas such as health care and education. The National Treasury is committed to further support the reform of public finance management to enhance efficiency, transparency, accountability, and prudence. We will implement the following measures. Number one, we are transiting from cash basis to accrual basis of accounting. And my peers is chairing that committee, Your Excellency. Number two, enhance or entrench the adopted zero-based budgeting process beginning in the financial year 25-26. The next budget is going to be zero-based. You must explain every shilling you are asking the Treasury to give you. So that is the justification of each item budgeted for. Number three, we are implementing an end-to-end e-government procurement system. This will improve governance, reduce opportunities for corruption, conflict of interest and abuse of office. Number three, number four, we are initiating a framework to make VAT refund processes open, transparent, and accountable. Number five, we are operationalizing the assets and inventory management modules in our IFME system with the module of MDS. The full visibility of all assets and inventories will facilitate optimal asset utilization and ensure that idle and unserviceable assets are disposed in conformity with the existing legal requirements. The increased efficiency and transparency will allow for improved governance and will see any public officer I almost thought that uh, they were reminding me that I've spoken too much. <laughs> but now I, I think I will move towards uh, closing. I was saying that this increased efficiency and transparency, Your Excellency, will allow for improved governance and will see any public officer found engaging in any malpractice held liable for their actions and dealt with in accordance with the law. Public participation has emerged as a strong value of governance in our nation, and it is why I make specific mention to Kenya Revenue Authority's ninth corporate plan that was developed through a consultative process informed by guidelines from the National Treasury and Economic Planning. 
aligned with Kenyan's Vision 2030 and goal of transforming Kenya into a newly industrialized middle-income economy. But, Your Excellency, I'm just coming to a close. There are just two things that I wanted to say, which is not in part of my speech, and is in response to what uh, the Chairman has said. The first one, Chairman, you're right that I was embarrassed at uh, Washington, not that we were treated badly, Your Excellency. I wanted just to clarify. But you see, when you find African countries queuing in corridor, then you are called one by one. Nigeria, you come, 15, 30 minutes. Rwanda, Kenya, I mean, for those of us who have some pride, it's a bit <laughs> demeaning. And uh, you see the, the money that we are asking for out there, Your Excellency, if we just tighten our system, we can do without some of these monies. We can do. Because today, IMF has released 78 billion shillings. But if KRA puts systems in place, we can collect not less than 400 billion shillings. So we can do without some of these loans. But again, uh, Your Excellency, the Chairman spoke about staff motivation. And I am aligned. Your Excellency, I think this is something we have discussed. And again, we will make sure that when we are doing our uh, budget, uh, budgeting, that we feed the cow which we milk, so that we don't milk the cow without feeding the cow. I just wanted to clarify those two issues. And um, Your Excellency, hata kama kuna zingine zijasoma, hizo sasa sitabaki. I think I've done my bit. Allow me, Your Excellency, to at this juncture invite the Prime Cabinet Secretary, the Honorable Musalia Mudavadi, to come and address our taxpayers. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Thank you. Your, Your Excellency, President William Samoy Ruto,